It's reaction time. Steve Richards and the 30-year sales veteran tries to take me down. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as the Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high-intensity training for car buyers. Today, I'm joined by Elizabeth as we react to Steve Richards' video, his all-time video, in fact, The 30-Year Veteran Salesman Tries to Take Me Down. Now, there's a lot of arrogance in this title, but that's what the car business is full of. Arrogance, ignorance, and the willingness to use a lot of justification, rationalization, and diversions instead of just plain old honesty, integrity, transparency, and fairness. In fact, that's a word you're probably not going to hear Steve even say today. So Steve Richards is watching our video today, too. He's one of our subscribers. Isn't that great news? It's great. <laughs> All right, let's roll Steve Richards' all-time most popular video as he defends everything in the car deal he is proposing on the video. Okay, Carol, thanks for your patience. Um, the uh, Civic you picked out, um, first choice of color, correct? Yeah. Equipped just the way you said it had to be equipped. Excellent. All right, we've worked hard to put together a fair proposal. However, we understand that you're the judge and jury when it comes to fair. We also know what happens if you don't think it's fair. You get up out of that seat, you walk back through our two front doors, and you jump in the car, you hope you never drive again, and you leave. By the way, that's exactly what people should do. When yes. anything doesn't happen that's to your satisfaction, you're the judge and jury of that, just get up and leave. That's why we made it fair. MSRP 25030. Now, the splash guards, this will be the best investment you make over the next four or five years. What? This this will be the this will be the best investment you'll make over the next 25 30 years. Is that what he said? Splash guards, yeah. Splash guards. So, splash guards apparently are the best investment you can make. Let's hear how good an investment that is. This will keep your vehicle's paint intact down both sides. It will double, triple, quadruple the cost when it comes to you getting money back by selling it or trading it. That's just uh, total BS. Like, why don't you just stop him right there? There's no amount of exaggeration that these people won't go through. Elizabeth, please comment on what you're hearing so far from this uh, presentation and what might you have done different right here? It's a sales pitch. And honestly, you can already tell his, uh, his facts aren't that straight. So why don't I just put him in his place and say, hey, I know what I want. And what you're doing is trying to sell me things I don't want. Can we just get the conversation back on track, please? I got somewhere to be in, in half an hour, an hour. Okay, let's do this. Exactly. <laughs> Take control of the situation. The pinstripes make it distinctive. There's your total investment. Our discount is $750. Your trade, we love it. We'll buy it for $15,950. I have to say something about the we'll love it on the trade. They say that all the time. Even when they give you a ridiculous lowball number on your trade-in, they'll say, we absolutely love your car and here's your number. It's kind of psychology to get you thinking that it's a fair trade when most often it's not. Please right? recognize this. When you trade the car to us, this is the amount of cash that stays in your pocket instead of going to the state of Georgia. So you add this to this, and that's seventeen twenty-five. dollars um, There's the difference. He's just adding the sales tax savings, which in most states, uh, you do get that when you traded a vehicle because you paid tax on it before. So he's adding sales tax to his bid number to give his bid number a larger look. Right. Stock fee, filing fee, your taxes, after your payoff, there's what you're financing. Now, he just slid those this. dock fees and whatever, like right past the customer, like no chance to object. That's right. Just zipped it out and jumped right over it. I'm going to go back to something that uh, he's talking to the customer about their savings on taxes. See, salespeople use this tactic all the time. You're saving money on taxes when you trade this vehicle in. You notice something? They never include taxes when they tell you how expensive their car is. So if they're going to tell you that their vehicle is a fifty thousand dollar car, well, they'll add. You know, they'll never tell you that it's actually a fifty four. We're looking at a fifty four thousand dollar car. No, they're going to tell you that it's a fifty thousand dollar car, and then you figure out the taxes right, after right. in finance. So they'll never present the price of their car with taxes, but they'll always present your trade in as whatever they're they're bidding on it plus tax savings. Each time you decrease your term, you save yourself a pile of money. The difference between this and this can be over $3,000 in interest that you save. Each time you... He's talking about term on a loan. 100% agree with this. 
However, it's not necessarily to get you to go into a shorter term. Steve might. In fact, I've heard on some of his videos that he's encouraging people to go with shorter term loans. And that's the responsible thing to do. Not a lot of car buyers do this. They'll go with these ridiculous 72, 84, or even 120 month loans. You should never be doing that. You can't afford the car if you're yeah. thinking about doing that. So this is actually a good point. However, he's positioning this in a way that the customer is more inclined to go for that longer term because they think they're saving money. Increase your term, your payment goes down. So with your initial investment of $1,000, your payment's 629 to 639. That payment may look high, but here's what it does for you. Saves you three grand. Allows you to pay it off quicker. You build equity faster. You have the freedom to trade or sell it sooner. At 72, this payment is comfortable and flexible. It's comfortable because it's 200 bucks less. It's flexible because you can always pay it off early without penalty and enjoy the same benefits you got up here. This payment Whoever pays their car off early, like when they go with these long-term finance loans, no. whoever has the financial discipline to pay their car off early. So don't buy that as the reason why you should be going with this long-term lower payments. Always go with the shorter term. And if you can't afford those shorter term, you can't afford the car. That's what it really comes down to. And right here is the best of both worlds. The payment's significantly less than it would be at 48. You save more money than you would at 72. Circle and initial the payment that works best for you. Okay, that right there. We'll get you in the Civic ready for delivery. So he, set the, he did the pencil trick. He put the pencil down so the customer could pick it up. But did you notice that he is getting the customer to focus on monthly payment? He didn't actually settle the price of the car and the price of the trade before that. So once you agree to your monthly payment, it's like you've agreed to everything else. That's right. He's, he's taking your focus. This is like, remember a while ago, we said, don't allow the finance man to tell you what you should be looking at and what you should be paying attention to in the car mm -hmm. contract. You hold it in your own hands and you look at the information that you want. In this case, he's, he's conditioning your mind to think about this deal in terms of payments. No, I want 18,000 for much money. Okay. Carol, the fact that you want $18,000 for your trade, Good move by the customer, by the way. He immediately ignored the payment stuff and went right to the price of the car. Now, listen to Steve's explanation of the price of the car. Is evidence that you are a perfectly normal human being. Everybody that trades a car in wants more for the trade. And they should. I want more for a trade. So that's not a problem we understand completely. Other than the trade value, everything else works fine. Nothing else stops you from taking the uh, Civic home today, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay. This is a elimination of objections. So he's trying to get you, again, mentally to think that there's nothing else you should be concerned about. So he throws that question out there. And then if you object to anything else, he's going to come back to that. He's going to say, you already told me there's nothing else in this deal that you're concerned about other than just the payment. Again, it's that really narrow focus. And yes, it's confusing because there's a lot of moving parts in a car deal, but you have to pay attention to the whole picture. It's never just one thing. Well, you're going to go, I don't believe it. But when I show you the math, you're going to discover that we're not that far apart. Okay? You want 18, and quite frankly, that's a great number. We hope that the vehicle can be worth 18 or even a little bit more. Make no mistake. So whatever research you've done is good. We'll buy it for $16,950. <laughs> he's, he's changing his numbers as he goes on the fly here. Do me a favor, Carol. Take eighteen thousand, subtract sixteen nine fifty for me, would you please? Two thousand fifty. Okay. So it, it looks on paper like we're two thousand fifty away. It's because you are two thousand fifty away. It doesn't just look like it. You know, if you're a mathematician and you can look at two numbers and you see that you're two thousand fifty apart, you're two thousand fifty apart. It's pretty simple. But fact, the matter. No, two thousand fifty. No. no. Oh, I'm sorry. So what, what's the number? 1,050. <laughs> Whoops. Now, that's the problem because it's only 15,950. The, the customer is so better is at math than Steve. My bad there. You're good with math though. I appreciate that. But we're not 2,050 apart because remember. He, he went right back to the bad number. <laughs> so that's hilarious to me. Punching 2,050 there. Then subtract 1,077. 
actually, you know what? I have to go back and correct that. The comment. So the 2050 actually is the good number. The customer caught that he put 16,950 as his bid on the appraisal uh, for the trade, which was actually only at 159. So then he corrects his number. He had bumped himself up a thousand bucks without realizing it. Oh. Nice and 973. Okay. So it looks like we're $973 apart. But in fact, we're not even $973. Remember your back bumper. Okay? For us or anybody else to get $18,000 for that vehicle, we're going to have to fix the back, back, back bumper. Otherwise, your car's in great shape. We love it. This is called the devaluing of the trade. Mm -hmm. So if it only costs $473 to repaint, sand, do whatever needs to be done to replace the bunker would be over a grand, but I don't think we need to replace it. That means we're $500 apart. However, if you decide that it was worth 500 bucks, make no mistake, 500 bucks is a lot of money. If you decided it was worth $500 to you to sell that sucker yourself in order to get 18, well, the first thing you'd have to do is what anybody has to do before they sell a car, and that's detail. When was the last time you paid for a full detail? About a year ago. What'd you pay? Uh, 200 bucks. Okay. Um, He's pretending like the cost of the detail is something that a customer has to take into consideration on the trade-in, when in fact, the reason why the dealer is buying this vehicle at a wholesale price is because they detail it. End of story. Your car's got hardly any miles on it. You don't need to do much else, but you would need to service it, okay? So I'm going to guess a lube oil and filter would be, what, 40 bucks? Yes. Okay. So if you just invested $240 because you got such a great car, that would still only net you $360 if you got eighteen grand for it. Let me ask you this, Carol. Is it worth going through all that to, 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 for $360? Or can I go ahead and get your new Civic ready for delivery? I'll just need you okay right there. Wow. Th throwing the pencil back on the desk. Here you go. Sign right here. It's that whole trick. But here's the thing. Th this is all like voodoo math that Steve's doing here. The oil change, the detail, that's everything that a dealer puts into the a car at actual cash value and then ends up marking it up to retail. And that's the reason also why we object to the document fees and all the other fees that they put into, these, into the vehicle because the whole entire reason a customer is paying a retail price and not a wholesale price on the vehicle is because they're things they do to recondition the car and get it ready for retail. So here's what I want to know. Where is the actual like Kelly Blue Book or NADA printout? Like all he's holding is a piece of paper folded in half. He's he's doing like the four square with him, right? He's just Correct. writing it down. He doesn't actually have the like the documents that you need to look at. How much of this speech would you have listened to? Uh, I'd be gone by now. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you, we're not compatible. So this isn't going to work. So if you can't fix it right now, I'm going to be gone. Bingo. Yeah, but I'm not going through all of that. Um, I'm going to get my 18 for this car. Okay. Don't blame me a bit. Um, would you sell it yourself to get 18? Yes, I would. Okay. This is really getting out into the muddy waters here, Steve. All right, and you know what? That may be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And if it is, Carol, I'll help you. Okay, when I mean I help you, I'll give you the odometer statement you'll need. I'll give you the title, the paperwork you need to transfer the title. I'll do all that for you because it would be in my best interest to help you sell it. Okay, but let's take a look at what you have to go through. I'm wondering what dealer would agree with this, that it's in the salesman's best interest to help the customer sell their vehicle private party. I don't know. Steve, you want to comment down below? Let us know what your boss thought about that statement. <laughs> Yeah, the reason why I know this is because not only did I assist many people in selling their vehicles outside of the dealership, because selling at private party almost always makes sense for you. And then we also did a fair number of pass-throughs. Pass yeah. yeah. So we help people bring in a trade. For those of you who don't know what a pass-through is, you can line up a private party buyer for your the vehicle you planned on trading. And then you go select your vehicle at the dealership and you bring that trade to the vehicle, that customer is there at the dealer too, and you basically do a pass-through. We'll do a video later on a pass-through and how you do that, but that was really, really slick. But I can tell you this much, it ticked off the dealer all the time when he did that. 
and then you make the call as to whether it's worth it. Cool? Because cool. it's all about the money. It's all about the money. And let's face it, the difference between fifteen nine fifty is for two. I tell you what, for two thousand fifty bucks, I know what I'd do. I know what I'd do. <laughs> this is this this is hilarious watching this guy. All of this stuff, you guys, is just I mentioned diversion, diversion, diversion. Yeah, he's just he's just going off one goat trail after another and trying to confuse the heck out of this customer. And it just totally cracks me up, Steve, that you call this a 30-year veteran taking you down. This is about as big a pile of BS. And I know for the benefit of our viewers that Steve has actually made comments on some content and possibly even on this video. That he's not exactly proud today of what this video was. I'd sell it myself, okay? I, I'd like to help you write the ad because the ad is key. The ad drives phone calls. The more phone calls you get, the better off you are. You don't want to put any number in there except your cell phone number. You don't want to take a chance on voicemail because voicemail, here's what happens. Somebody's looking for a car, they dial, they get voicemail, they hang up, they go to the next car because they're looking at probably a list of 75 or 80 Subarus, okay? So make sure that the ad's good and you answer all the calls. If you get 200 calls, which is a good ad, by the way, there'll be 100 who make it through to you. There'll be 50 who are interested. There'll be 25 who will make an appointment to come and see you, and there'll be 12 who show up, okay? Happens to everyone that sells a car, happens to us all the time. So you will spend some time waiting for people who don't show up, but you know what, for two grand, it's worth it. Um, once you sell it, and you will, in fact, you'll sell it more than once. You'll sell it once, twice, three times. What do I mean? Happens to us, happens to everybody. Someone comes in, they buy it, they shake your hand, they look you in the eye, and they say they'll be back because a car in that price range is going to require financing. You never hear from them again, Carol. Okay, they see something else or they can't get the money. Does a car in the 19000 price range require financing? No. A anybody who's been saving their money and then continually building up, if you're shopping for a $19,000 car, you should be thinking about paying cash for it anyway. So... That's not a true statement. The other thing is, is that it, you just listen to the hilariousness of this whole thing. As Steve has really thought this through. When, when we talk about word tracks and storylines and things like that, that salespeople uh, run their customers through, he's thought through all the details of this and he wants to make it sound as complicated as, as possible. But like I said, this is nothing but one huge diversion. He's trying to wear the customer out. They don't have the common courtesy to call you, but you will sell. It'll take you, takes us 45 to 60 days to sell a used car. There's a chance it might take you that long. Maybe. Sure. Um, so you will make another payment. All right. I'm <laughs> hold that thought. Um, He's going to take the payment out of the value of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, but you will sell it. Once you sell it, then you don't want any more phone calls because no one ever calls you up after you sold them a car and thanks you for it. They call you up because they want something fixed. Mm -hmm. So you may want to change your number. You, but... you may want to change your number. <laughs> Yikes. You know what's interesting about that? Is that, have you ever bought a car? And this is a question more for our viewers. Have you ever bought a car somewhere and then had an issue or problem with it and you take it back to the dealer and it's like they don't know you. It's like they changed their number. They changed their address. They're like, who the heck are you? Yeah, dealers treat you like a total stranger after you've bought your car and you go back to try to resolve a problem. Right. If you do sell it, you're going to make some money. Let's find out how much money. Um, you wanted a discount on the Civic, didn't you? Yeah. And you came to a retail car store. You're going to put this car on the internet. You're going to have lots of people looking at it. People that go on the internet looking to buy from a private seller, are they looking to pay as much as they can or are they looking for a bargain? Looking for a bargain. You think they might want a discount? Mm -hmm. Think about this, Carol, just for a second. You've been doing this for 35, 40 days. You've um, had more people not show up than you can shake a stick at. You've sold it once, but no money's come through. Um, finally, a nice young couple comes by. By the way, you want to make sure you ride with everybody. The easiest way to steal a car now is not to go out after midnight. With this guy is making me tired. <laughs> no, like just interrupt. Seriously. Yeah, I, I would have to go. You know, you know what? Um, how much longer is this speech? Because I'm going to need a cup of coffee just to stay awake <laughs> through this. Wow. Mind numbing. Slim Jim gets to get up on Sunday morning, make a pot of coffee, light a cigarette, peruse the uh, help or the uh, 
classifieds pick out the car they want to steal and go over. They go, you, you invite them over, they show you a bogus driver's license, give you a fake hundred dollar bill. So ride with everybody. <laughs> Listen to that. Fake hundred dollar bill, cigarette, a cup of coffee. You got to go for a ride. You know, you end up with a child molester. How, how, how far are you going to go with this story, Steve? Come on. But you ride with a nice couple. They come back. They say, we love it. Um, you know, you've heard that before. They say, look, uh, we'd like to pay you right now. $17,250 in cash, which means they're asking for a $750 discount, the same thing that you asked us for. Is there a chance you might take that $17,250 because it's a lot more than we can pay you? No, you just told me that. I should sell it for nineteen. Uh, dollars You want to ask nineteen? Yeah, you just... You okay. just that, you okay. Pay. He's so busy on the story, the details of the story, that he can't keep any of the numbers straight. That's hilarious. Okay, great. 19. Now you're at 3050. Okay? No, I'll take my 18250. Um, take your 18250. That's cool. So you take 18250, which is $1,300 more than we can pay you, right? Correct. Or 1400 No, it's $1,400. That's $1,400. No, I'm sorry. Hmm. That's $2,300 more than we can pay you. We're at 16950. You're at 18250. Steve's old enough to not have taken common core math. <laughs> but this, <laughs> is a, this is really, really bad math, Steve. Really bad. And anybody who is listening to this, I mean, we're like 10 minutes into this video. And of course, we've done stop starts. But I couldn't have listened to any of this stuff. I just have to say, listen, buddy, stop. Like right in the beginning, stop. It's the price of the vehicle. It's the price of the car. It's interest rates we're talking about if you're financing cash down. Let's talk about the, uh, the the cost of the tax title license and the out the door price. End of story. If that's a conversation he can't have, and so far he hasn't touched any of that stuff. It's been beating around the bush with this whole thing. 250, zero, zero, two, carry the one, 21. $2,100 $2, more than we can pay you. That's a heck of a deal, because now you're 2,100 bucks up. By the way, you've also put your car on the internet at a higher price than any other Civic on there, so it may cut down on your phone calls. But, you know, that's okay. You're $2,100 up. He's just insulting this guy's intelligence left and right. You've put this on the internet, which, by the way, is higher than anybody, any other Civic that's out there. Nonsense. He's just making complete BS statement. I'm wondering, Steve, because of course you're going to see this video. Do you care to apologize for that in the comment section down below? Love to see it. Remember the tax credit? Mm -hmm. You lose it. Now you're 1023 up. That's pretty good money. But you made another car payment, didn't you? You did. Okay, so now you're eight. But wait, the payoff is lower if you make another car. The payoff payout, is lower, so yeah. So he's skirting around that fact. Bingo. So if there's a loan on it and he made another payment, the payoff is lower. Yeah, that money comes back to his pocket anyway. So you cannot subtract the payment on the loan. Six. Now you're $668 up. But you had to do a little change. A little change. Detail it. Now and you're detail it. $428 up. Is it worth taking the next 45 days out of your life to become a car salesman for $428, Carol? It's, That's a great question. Who wants to be a car salesman? It's worth Steve to ramble on for that many minutes because he's trying to make more money for himself. So There it is. There it is. 428 bucks. So... That's one of the worst rationalizations for why you should trade in a car that I've actually ever heard. And pretty much anybody, if you sell your car a private party, you'll come out ahead every single time. I mean, it's, it's yeah, of course there's the exception, but almost never the case. Or would you rather have us do all the work and you take delivery of your new Civic? No, I don't wanna tell my wife. Uh, I didn't get the money that she said I was supposed to get. Well. You can do one of two things. Mm -hmm. You can take all of this paperwork home to her and go through it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Or you can invite me over for dinner and I'll be happy to do it for you. Ew, no <laughs> way, was, man. That was probably the worst thing in the whole video. You can invite me over. So this creeper who's been giving you this line of crap. Holy cow.
I couldn't think how much I'd have to dislike my family to bring somebody like this home and say, all right, you guys, I just heard this mind numbing speech at a dealership. <laughs> and because I don't want to repeat any of the BS, I want him to tell it to all of you. Like, what the heck did they do? Did they break all the windows at home? Were they that bad? You know, the kids were terrible. I'm going to bring Steve Richards over to tell you guys a BS story. <laughs> kind of a bedtime story. The Met fall asleep. Yeah. There's a few seconds left of the video. I can't play any more of it. We're, we're, we're done. Steve Richards, <laughs> you're not coming over for dinner. And uh, no, you don't get to tell that story to the wife and family. So never mind. All right, Elizabeth, anything else you want to say about this video? I'm just glad it's over. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you appreciated our reaction video today to Steve Richards, 30-year car salesman, well, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your other social media platforms out there. We'll continue to expand the reach of the homework guy. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below. But you know what? If you really want to help and you want to increase your good luck on your next car deal, well, help us get the word out and share our content. Encourage others to subscribe too because subscribers to the Homework Guy channel get lucky on great car deals. Yes, they do. All the time. Help us get to a million subscribers and by doing so, you're helping to bring fairness and honesty to the car business. Something Steve Richards didn't say the whole time on this video. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with Elizabeth. By the way, I was at a dinosaur museum recently and I'm pretty sure I saw Steve Richards wall of fame or wall of shame. Not sure which one it was, but a photo there at the dinosaur museum. So well done, Steve.